the final home regular season series of the season for the Miami softball team wrapping up on this Sunday afternoon from Oxford as Miami looks to go for the sweep and a crucial one at that against a Central Michigan team that currently sits top three with the Red Hawks in the Mid-American Conference standings. Red Hawks and Chippewas on this Sunday afternoon, round three of this MAC weekend set. Everyone, Luke West Bully with you here on Love and Honor Live. Miami taking on Central Michigan in a crucial game as the Red Hawks continue to chase after another MAC regular season title that would allow them to host the MAC tournament here in a couple of weeks' time. Bree Pratt back in the circle for Miami for this third game, and she will face this Central Michigan lineup. Abby Tolmy hitting first in center field. McKaylee Valamont out in right. Kelsey Alexander, the left fielder. Alyssa Holo, the designated player, hitting fourth. Skylar Coberly at second base hits fifth. The sixth hitter is Emily Bracamonte at third base. Sammy Mills hitting seventh and catching. Lucy Cronin hitting eighth at first base and rounding out the order is the shortstop, Maddie Springer. On the season for Bree Pratt, 3.02 ERA. Strong win-loss record for the Red Hawk ace. 1.26 whip on the year. 24 wins and 10 losses. 171 strikeouts in 204 innings. Abby Tolmy, the 389 hitter, standing in. Starting game number 47 on the year for Central Michigan. She's missed just two games this season. Pratt deals home the first offering, and it's up high for ball one. Getting started right at 12 noon on a beautiful Sunday afternoon from Oxford. Miami took both games of the doubleheader yesterday. 4-2 win in game one and rounded out the twin bill with an 8-0 run rule victory in five innings. Ono rides up high as Pratt still trying to get the ball down. Wind blowing somewhat strongly out towards right field. Solid crowd on hand for a Sunday noon game. 2-0. This one rolled over foul. Second best hitter by average, Abby told me on this team. Was 0 for 3 in the second game yesterday after a 2 for 4 start. And a hitter's count of 2 1. It takes right over the plate for strike two. So only had a bit of a struggle over the past couple weekends that she kind of got out of in the finale against Bowling Green when she went 3 for 4 and then had another multi hit game, as mentioned, to begin this series before going hitless. Yesterday in game two. Count runs full to the leadoff hitter. Bree Pratt threw just 60 pitches. That was all she needed in game number two yesterday to get the win. Miami had to come back in game one from a deficit to win it four to two. The payoff. Swung on and blasted out to right field, but this ball gets foul into the seats. Not straightened out, that ball foul the whole way, but absolutely ripped by Tolmy in a full count. That one ends up on the concourse, and it's still three and two. This time grounds it over to Short, waiting on it, Barlow, and she'll make the play across. A hard stretch there from Blaska. But it's in time for out number one. The right fielder for the Chippewans, number 41, McKaylee Valamont. So McKaylee Valamont now standing in for the Chips. 396 hitter. Couched in the right-hander's box, lays off the first offering for ball one. Bree Pratt trying not to fall behind second hitter in a row too much. Bree 
Pratt gave up just two hits across five innings in game two yesterday. Pitched a complete game in game one. 1-0 one -oh missing for ball two. Gave up two runs off seven hits. Walked one, struck out five in the series opener. Two zero, and that finds the zone. Check swing from Valamont. She holds it up, but that clips the inside half to make it two and one. Valamont, Alexander, and Holo. The next three up for the chips. The top power threats on this team. Two one is taken down and in. Five home runs, ten doubles on the year. For Valamont, home run count second on the team, double count tied for first. The 3 1. And this one is crushed out to deep left field, going back on it. Banks, that's gone. McKaylee Valamont gets ahead in the count and blasts her sixth home run of the season, a solo shot. The Chips take the first lead of the game, 1-0 in the top of the first inning. The Chippewa left fielder, number six, Kelsey Alexander. So that brings in Kelsey Alexander out in left field. Base is empty, one gone. Bree Pratt, who struggled a little bit with the command to start things off, gave up a really hard hit foul ball to Abby Tolmy. And then Valamont able to straighten one out in left field. Pratt deals a first pitch strike this time. Alexander, the third in line of hitters with an average above 300 and top this order for the chips. Taps the 0 1 off herself. Standing up in the front part of the box. to waste offering down and in that Alexander does not chase at. The one, two, and touched foul. For Bree Pratt, that's the 15th home run she's allowed this season. In 37 appearances, 35 starts. One, two, off the handle foul. And it'll do it again. Pratt up to 12 pitches with just one out on the board. That was her pace through the five innings in the shutout win in game two yesterday. Another long at bat here, the third in a row for the Chippewas. Another one, two to Alexander. And this one is lifted up, left side could be trouble, but Barlow back there in plenty of time and she will make the play for out number two. He's got a little bit too much underneath one, hit to a good spot, but Alexander pops out for the second out. And that brings in the cleanup hitter. Alyssa Holo, the designated player. 
He's the team leader in home runs by a considerable margin with nine. Catches the first pitch off the bottom of the bat. One nothing Chippewas, top first. Base is empty, two gone. With a solo home run from McKaylee Valamont. This one is reached for and it just ticks off the foot of Hollow as she was getting ready to run that one out. It was still in the box, so it's just a foul ball, strike two. O2 pitch, down in the dirt. Check swing, appeal to first, and no swing. Chuck Martin in the house, just made his way into the front row. One ball and two strikes to Alyssa Holo. Pitch, check swing, just rolled right up to the circle where Brat charges in and fires on the first for out number three. Central Michigan strikes first in the top of inning number one. McKaylee Valamont, the only batter to do anything for Central, but she did it with a deep fly, a home run to make it one nothing chips as we head to the home half. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Grace Lido takes the circle for Central Michigan. Her team's already got a 1-0 lead after the solo home run by McKaylee Valamont. Miami comes to the plate for the first time, and Allie Cummins, the right fielder, leads off. Cummins hitting 320 on the year with a 1.26 OPS. Red Hawks have five players in their lineup with an OPS over 1,000. From the back of the batter's box, Cummins awaits. Lado's first pitch over the outside half of the plate for strike one. 3.53 ERA on the season, 13 and 10, Grace Lado. This is her 25th start. The 0-1. And that catches the zone as well, strike two. So Cummins quickly falls behind. Graduate student out of nearby Westchester, Ohio. And she hits the 0-2 well out to right field, going back, Valamont at the wall, and that ball is gone. Two strike hitting, Oppo Taco for Allie Cummins. Off the hitting tunnels to the opposite field and Miami answers with a solo shot of their own to begin the first. Up, 
17th home run of the season for Ali Cummins, ties her with Carly Spade for most on the team. And now Holly Blaska stands in with this game tied. Blaska wraps that one foul. 313 hitter on the season. 573 slug. Blaska's 38 RBIs plays her third on the team. Lado deals the 0-1. And a breaking ball in there for strike two. He was flame throwing to Allie Cummins. And that home run swing wasn't even necessarily a super hard swing, just kind of deflected it the opposite way. Again, she's ahead 0-2. That time taken down at it. Teams fighting for position right now near the top of the MAC. With a win today, Miami could clinch a top three seed in the MAC tournament. Four teams qualify. But with recent performances, Red Hawks likely have their eyes on the home field advantage. The one two waved at and missed for strike three. Blaska underneath it. One away in the bottom of the first inning. Red Hawks, third baseman, number seven, Curly Brings in Carly Spade, junior out of Chicago. Last season's All-American, hitting 358. The front foot offset. She takes at the shoulders for ball one. Ohio and Western Michigan currently tied up at eight apiece at the end of the fifth in a game that was started yesterday and then Pushed to today after a couple of innings due to rain. Game in Kalamazoo. The 1-0. Up and away, two balls, no strikes. So the Red Hawks currently holding on to a half game lead above the rest of the MAC. Ohio is right behind them at 17 and seven. Central Michigan close behind as well at 17 and eight. The 2-0 to Spade. She goes swinging and fouls it into the screen. Top seed gets to host the MAC tournament. Red Hawks did it last year and won the whole thing in pretty dominant fashion. A five inning run rule in the championship game against the Bowling Green Falcons. The 2 1. Breaking ball. Speed might have been a little out in front there. Spade, as with the rest of the Miami Bats, struggled a little bit to start the year, but has been on a tear lately. It's a Miami team that really struggled to begin conference play by their standards. 2-2 the comes in, taken for strike three. Fastball on the inside corner, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Grace Lato. And there's two out in the bottom of the first. The catcher for the Red Hawks, number 15, Riley Coy. Red Hawks have come back in a big way to even make it competitive atop the MAC. Poor home field advantage, but really turned a corner in early April. Trying to claim their fourth straight MAC title. Riley Coyne at the plate takes above the eyes for ball one. Red Hawks have won the last three available MAC championships, 2022, 2021, and then back in 2019 prior to the COVID cancellation. 1-0 to Coin, and she loops this one up right side. Diving effort made by second baseman Coberly. She won't get there. Inning extended by a Riley Coin bloop single. Just flared one out there again the opposite way. Stepping to the plate, the center fielder, number two, Jenna Golombeski. So that brings in Jenna Golombeski. <laughs> 3-2 the 
337 hitter. She's second on the team in average. So 14 home runs to go along with it. First pitch taken up at the shoulders for ball one. She's got the best OPS at the team at 1.269. Two triples, four doubles for her in terms of extra base hits on the season to go with her 14 home runs. 1-0. And taken on the high part of the zone for strike one. Olembeski, well, sophomore to Woodstock, Illinois. Hits in both games of the doubleheader yesterday. One for two in game one, two for three in the second game. Scored a run in each as well. 1-1 one, one is taken upstairs. Hit a home run in the second game. That brought in three runs. The 2-1. Taken off the plate, three balls and a strike. Chloe Parks waiting on deck for Miami. Olembeski oh, ahead 3-1, takes a big hack at that one, now a back pick to first, but Coyne back in time. 3-2 with two outs. Riley Coyne over on first with the inning extending base hit. The 3-2, and this one looped up the middle, backing up on it from second. The catch made by Coberly behind the bag. And that's the third out of inning number one. One run off two hits, one left for the Red Hawks in the bottom of the first inning. And we head to inning number two, all tied up at one. You're watching Miami Softball on Love and Honor Live. Top two here from Oxford, 1-1 one, one our score off a pair of solo shots, one from each side, McKaylee Valamont for CMU and Allie Cummins for Miami. 5-6-7 coming up in the Central Michigan order, Skyler Coberly had a couple of balls hit her way towards the tail end of the last half inning in the field coming up to the plate. It's the second baseman, the four, Skyler Coberly. Oberly, the redshirt junior out of Bay City, Michigan. And the first pitch taken low and in to her. Hitless over her last four games. Her last hit coming. Back against Bowling Green in that series opener, the 1-0, and this one twisted on over to third. Spade is there, and that's one out. CMU's third baseman. Emily Bracamonte up to the plate. Chippewas worked a lot of long at-bats in the first inning. 
Orsbury Pratt over 20 pitches after she threw just 60 total over five innings the second game yesterday. First pitch just missing off the inside corner to Bracamonte. The 1-0, and this one is sent foul into the Miami dugout, deflects on over. Bree Pratt back to it, one ball, one strike. The 1-1, this one waited on and poked out to center, but right at Golombeski, who makes the catch for out number two. Sammy Mills, the catcher at the plate. Bases empty, two gone in the top of the second inning. Final road series of the regular season for the Chippewas. The game tied at one. Mills takes strike one. Central Michigan going to play a midweek. Coming up this week on Tuesday, 5 p.m. start on the road against Notre Dame. Red Hawks fell to the Fighting Irish earlier this season in a midweek game. 0-1. Rises high. Chips will have Akron at home next weekend for three. Friday, Saturday, Sunday set. Akron team fighting for their lives right now. Right on the edge from the outside looking in to the MAC tournament. A 1-1. And she hits it off herself. Foul, 1-2. It's very crunched for the top three, and then there's a bit of space after Miami, Ohio, and Central Michigan, and then a whole bunch of teams all within a couple games of each other. Western Michigan, Kent State, Toledo, Northern Illinois, Akron, and Ball State all fighting for one spot, all just a couple games apart. One, two. This one hit on the ground, second base side. That's too far for Parks to get to into center field for a base hit. And so Mills extends the side. The first baseman, number two. Lucy Cronin will get her first look at the plate. 229 hitter. Junior out of South Lyon, Michigan. Was 0 for 5 over the course of the doubleheader. It's the first pitch on the ground, waiting on it at short. Barlow fires on to first. Bit of a stretch required by Blaska, but she makes the catch to her left. And it's four up and three down for Central. They strand one in the top of the second inning. 1-1, one, one, we head to the home half here on Love and Honor Live. Number four, Chloe, Chloe Parks. Parks leads off the bottom of the second inning for Miami in a 1-1 tie with Central Michigan in the series finale as the Red Hawks look to go for the sweep over the Chippewas. Parks hitting 297 on the year. Sophomore from Indianapolis. Will face off against Grace Leto who had a pretty decent showing in the first inning after giving up the leadoff home run. Pair of strikeouts. Softly hit base knock from Riley Coyne, but then got a pop out to get out of the inning. First pitch is rolled over foul. The 
Parks was hitless in game one yesterday, then two for three in game two with a home run. 0-1 is in the dirt. Gets by Mills, hits off the feet of home plate umpire Antonio Flores. Wind has shifted more now out towards center field when it was blowing a little more towards right to begin the game. 1-1 one, one to Parks. And she hits this one chopper on the ground, fielded by Cronin, tough play, diving, she got him at first. Got her glove on the base. And it's a three unassisted. Parks goes down. Nobody covering the base that time for Cronin. So she'll do it herself. And that brings up Kate Kobayashi with one gun. First pitch to Kobayashi, and she takes it in the air. Straightaway center coming in on it, Tolmi, and she'll make the play right on the M. Out in center, one pitch was all it took to retire Kobayashi for out number two. Miami shortstop, number six, Adriana Barlow. Brings up Adriana Barlow. Shortstop from St. Louis. Right-handed swinger, corner infield level with the bags, and Barlow takes strike one. Barlow hitting 250 on the year, has started 48 out of 49 games for Miami this year. No one, that's upstairs, one ball, one strike. Marlow, one of the better defenders on this team, has been their starting shortstop this year. The 1-1, and she fouls it off right side. Ball and two strikes to Barlow. Grace Lato trying to work a 1-2-3 inning. Haven't seen one yet on either side. Bree Pratt has given up a hit in the top of each inning so far. Red Hawks had two at the plate in the bottom of the first. One, two, foul tipped and dropped by Mills. Just couldn't get to that one. It was just enough from Barlow to redirect it. Still one and two. And now the pitch, and this one grounded left side. That's through the gap in the infield for a base hit. So a nice at bat work by Barlow. And a foul ball on two strikes. Stepping in next, the left fielder, number 29. Got one on the ground through the infield, and that brings up Maddie Banks, the nine hitter, with a chance to flip over this Miami lineup. Banks hitting 266 on the year. 10 extra base hits for her. Check swings at the first pitch and it's in there for strike one. No balls, one strike. Banks out in left field. Lays off the 0-1, back pick to first, will not draw a tag. Banks had hits in both games yesterday. Previously was hitless in her last two against Ball State. 1-1. Got a piece, but couldn't square it up, and it's 1-2.
Ball and two strikes to Maddie Banks. And pitch. Breaker up high, taking in on the hands for ball two. OU Western Michigan still knotted up at eight, end of six from Kalamazoo. Another 2-2 two -two to Banks, here comes. Popped up behind home, that's getting out of play. Thumps right on top of us behind home. Two balls and two strikes. Banks readies up, righty on lefty, the pitch. Down in the dirt, and that's gonna allow Barlow to take second base. So that changes things a bit here as the runner moves into scoring position with now a full count to Banks. Allie Cummins, who's already hit a home run in this game, is on deck. A 3-2, fought off. So Banks stays alive on a full count. Three hits for the Red Hawks, two for the Chips. Both teams with a solo shot in the first. Those are the only runs we have so far. Another payoff. This one ripped on the ground right side, base hit. Wave sign given to Barlow. Throw home is wide and she scores. Miami takes the lead off the RBI single from Maddie Banks. Now number 23, right fielder, Allie Cummins. Allie Cummins back up to the plate. It's the Miami lineup flipped over. Cummins one for one with a homer. Hit a no doubter to the opposite field that hit off the hitting tunnels out and right. Runner on first, two gone. First pitch taken over the plate for strike one. So the Red Hawks have their first lead of the game at 2 1. Now the 0-1 pitch, just off the corner. Come in standing back in. 1-1 one, one from Lado. And this one grounded over to second base, getting the force is Coberly, and that retires the side. In the bottom of the second inning, RBI single from Maddie, Brank, Maddie Banks brings home Adriana Barlow. And two hits for Miami is enough to bring them back into the lead for another time this weekend as they go for the sweep. 2-1 Red Hawks, we head to the third. You're watching Love and Honor Live.
Top three, 2-1. Miami takes the lead in the bottom of the second inning as Matty Banks' RBI single drives in Adriana Barlow to give the Red Hawks their first lead of the game. Chips got a two-out hit in the last inning, but were not able to push a run through. Matty Springer, final Central Michigan batter to come up to the plate. Springer out of the nine spot, 208 hitter this year. And the first pitch to her is in there. First strike one from Bree Pratt. That spins the ball in her right hand and now readies up for the 0-1. And this one lined right at Barlow at short. Didn't have to move and makes the catch for the first out. And to end, number seven. Fielder, Abby Top of the order for Central Michigan. Abby Tolmy grounded out to short her first time up. One away in the top of the third. Tolmy the junior from Clarkston, Michigan. First pitch to her falls low for ball one. Second team all max selection the last two years. It's a freshman and sophomore. One-0 pitch. Low for ball two. Draws some groans from the Miami Faithful. Crowd that has grown slightly in size since first pitch. The 2-0, that's in there for strike one. Pratt gave up the solo home run to McKaylee Valamont, who's on deck. Outside of that, just a lot of weak contact for the most part and little hard contact Central Michigan has had has been hit right at Miami Gloves. The 2-1, and this one popped up in the air. Diving effort from Barlow, she can't come down with it. It was the right decision from Barlow to try and get that ball in the air. Could have if she decided to also play that on a hop and try to throw to first, but likely would have been beaten out. And so that means McKaylee Valamon, who hit the deep fly back in the first inning, is up to the plate with a base runner on. First pitch is taken on the inside corner for strike one. Pratt readying back up. And this one lifted up left side and that ball drops foul. Stop start at first from Abby Tolney. No balls, two strikes. Alamont ready in the right hander's box. It's this one up the middle, fielded by Barlow. Taps on the bag, on to first. It's a 6-3 double play to retire the side. How's that to make up for it? Barlow couldn't make a really difficult play in trying to dive for the out, but ends the inning with a 6-3 double play, and the Red Hawks retain their lead, headed to the bottom of the third. 2-1 Miami, the home half on the way from Love and Honor Live.
Blaska. Ali Blaska leading off for Miami in the bottom of the third inning. Strong defensive play to end it from shortstop Adriana Barlow and the Red Hawks still leading two to one. Blaska 0 for one with a strikeout and takes a fastball for strike one. Blaska the first part of back-to-back -back strikeouts dealt out by Grace Lado to the two and three hitters. There are only two strikeouts so far. The 0-1 falls low and in, one ball, one strike. On the Miami side, Bree Pratt has not struck a batter out yet. He's been pitching to contact, but has been doing so pretty well. One one to Blaska. Outside for ball two. Blaska, the native of Minnesota, was one for three and one for four in each of the two games yesterday after going hitless, a combined 0 for 10 in the Ball State series. 2-1, and she fouls it off herself. Two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Rocking the no batting gloves, 2-2. Two -two. Taken for ball three, and the count is full. Forty pitches so far for Grace Lado. Bree Pratt, who was over 20 after one inning, up to just 42 through three. The three-two. Ball four. So Blaska doesn't need to put one in play that time. She will take the walk. And that brings up Carly Spade, who got rung up her first time at the plate. First pitch to Spade. And she taps it foul. one breaking ball in for strike two noticeable speed taken off that one by Grace Leto so spade down nothing in two here's the pitch waves and misses for strike three spade chases outside the zone and Leto has Miami's best hitter on strikes down twice. Brings up Riley Coyne, runner on first one away. Coyne choked up ever so slightly on the bat. And she crushes this one sky high out to left. Alexander camped underneath it, now comes way in to make the catch. So Alexander, the left fielder, might have fooled us a bit as to where that ball was hit. Off the bat, tracked all the way back to the warning track on a ball that was hit really hard. And then had to come a ways in at the last minute to make that catch about mid-outfield. Jenna Golombeski now at the plate. Same situation as the last time that she came up with a runner on first and two gone. And takes the first pitch right over the plate for strike one. The ball's in a strike, Golombeski 
looped one up in the air through the middle that was caught by the second baseman, Skyler Coberly, who retired the side back in the first. Runner goes, breaking ball, and the tag is dropped. Might have been in time there from Coberly, but it was kind of an awkward throw, and looked like she might have got some late reaction in covering the base. It was running one way and reaching the other way and wasn't able to come up with it, so Blaska moves into scoring position. One ball and one strike to Golombeski. One one pitch. And this one hit pretty well out to left field. Going back, Alexander, and that ball's gone. Fifteen home runs this year for Jenna Golombeski. And a two-run shot puts Miami in front by three. 4-1 Red Hawks in the bottom of the third. So Chloe Parks up to the plate now with the bases empty. And the first pitch taken the opposite way, caught by Bracamonte at third. And that retires the side in the bottom of the inning. Two run shot, Jenna Golombeski, her 15th of the year, puts Miami in front by three, 4-1 Red Hawks to the fourth. Top of the fourth inning from Oxford. Miami with a somewhat comfortable three-run lead now in the fourth. Bree Pratt back to it in the circle. Bad news for Miami is that Ohio has jumped out to a three-run lead in the seventh over Western Michigan. So if the Bobcats were to win that first game, that would bring them back into a tie for first place with Miami. Red Hawks do have the tiebreaker because of winning the series earlier this season that the two teams played. OU and Western Michigan will meet one more time later today when the first game concludes. So the Red Hawks able to match OU's tallies the rest of the season, they would host the MAC tournament. Kelsey Alexander at the plate, takes a first pitch down and away from Bree Pratt for ball one. Central Michigan still not out of it in terms of hosting the MAC tournament either. So they're just one game behind the Red Hawks and Bobcats. 1-0, and that drops low for ball two. Central Michigan really needs this one though if they don't want to go into the final weekend needing a lot of help. The 2-0 pitch. That bounces in. So a little bit of control issues for Bree Pratt to begin this inning. Three balls, no strikes. Pratt deals off the plate, ball four. So Alexander doesn't have to take the bat off her shoulder to get on base. 
And that's going to draw a visit out to the circle from Riley Coyne. And blowing directly to the right, some cloud coverage has made its way in over the stadium. Still waiting for the temperatures in Oxford to stay warm consistently. It's about 50 degrees right now. We're in the final weekend of April. Final regular season home game for Miami. Runner on first with one gun. And the batter, Alyssa Holo. Takes a hack at the first pitch and comes up empty for strike one. For the Red Hawks, they will be on the road against Kent State next weekend. 3 p.m. start on Friday, then a doubleheader on Saturday, 1 p.m., 3 p.m. up in Kent. 0-1, breaking ball high. One ball, one strike. Golden flashes would pretty much need to win out and get everyone around them to lose in order to make the MAC tournament, but still not impossible for Kent State. 1-1 one, one pitch, popped up foul. Golden flashes are 11 and 12 in conference play right now. The team currently sitting in fourth place in that final spot is Ball State, also with 12 losses, but with five more wins, 16 and 12, the Cardinals record in conference play. One, two to Holo. Strike three called. First strikeout for Bree Pratt. And after the four pitch walk, that's a way to bounce back. One gone in the top of the fourth. The batter, Skyler Coberly, grounded out to third base. Her first time up. Wide gap on the left side of the infield if she could put one there. Now's the first pitch off. Nothing in one, 5-3 the hits in favor of Miami, 4-1 the Red Hawks lead. Three of the four runs coming in off of home runs. This one ripped at the shortstop. Barlow tries to go to first to double off Alexander, but she's back in time. Nonetheless, a strong play made again by the Miami shortstop. She has seen a lot of action come her way this afternoon. Two gone in the fourth, Emily Bracamonte comes up to the plate. Bracamonte waits on the first pitch, it's low for ball one. Monte hit a ball pretty well out to center field her first time up. Line drive that was caught by Jenna Golombeski. Smile on the face of Bree Pratt as she readies for the 1-0. This one hit on the ground at short. Barlow makes the flip over to Parks for the force, and that retires the side in the top of the fourth inning. Lead off walk, but nothing more for Central. They still trail 4-1 our score. Miami looking for more when we come back. You're watching Miami Softball on Love and Honor Live.
Red Hawks. In the bottom of the fourth, it's number 22, designated player Kate Kobayashi. Kate Kobayashi leading off for Miami in the bottom of the fourth inning. 4-1, the Red Hawks out in front. Kobayashi 0 for 1 with a fly out to center. Miami with five hits, two of them home runs. B. Pratt has done very well in the circle for the Red Hawks after giving up the home run back in the first inning. First pitch outside from Grace Lato for ball one. Lato so far, three strikeouts, one walk. All four runs against her are earned. The 1-0 is tipped over to the right side. Actually, correction, the one that was not earned after the pass ball, or wild pitch rather, moved Barlow up to second base before she was knocked in on the RBI single. So three earned runs against Grace Leto so far. 1-1 one, one pitch. This is down low for ball two. Two balls and a strike to Kate Kobayashi. Kansas City, Missouri native. Here comes. Takes it in for ball three. Leadoff walk came back to bite Grace Lido in the last inning as Holly Blaska was driven in on the home run from Jenna Golombeski. Headed into the swamp in left field. 3-1. It's in there for strike one. Kobayashi took a step down towards first base, but looked like that one was pretty solidly in there. Three balls, two strikes. We've seen a lot of these today. Here's the pitch. This one lifted up in the air and waiting back on it. The catch made by Tolmy. Ball just hung up there for a while. Second fly out to center from Kobayashi. Looked like it might get kicked down and drop in for a blue pit. Instead, Kobayashi now 0 for 2. Wind gusting back and forth between right and center. Currently blowing about as strong as it's been out towards center field. Adriana Barlow, the batter for Miami. Single and a run scored for her today. First pitch swinging, pops it up right side. Somebody back there dropped the bare hand catch out in the stands. Nothing in one to Barlow. That went off the corner, one and one. Ball and a strike to Adriana Barlow. Some good news in out-of-town scoreboards for Miami. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball high. Two balls and a strike. Three-run shot in the bottom of the seventh inning from Western Michigan. They've got the game tied at 11 now and a chance to walk it off for the Broncos. Wild game. 2-1 is waved at and missed from Barlow for strike two. OU trailed by as many as four, took the lead. Western had it tied going into the seventh. Three runs came across in the top of the inning for Ohio. Western Michigan with three runs of their own. Still nobody out in the seventh with a walk-off chance for the Broncos. 2-2 pitch to Barlow. Off the plate for ball three. Obviously any losses Ohio's way would be very, very good for these Red Hawks chances. And the Chippewas as well, so probably both sides with something to root for in that game with these two teams both in the top three along with Ohio. Barlow's got a 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. Barlow goes chasing upstairs. It's the fourth strikeout for Grace Leto. And she's worked her way through this bottom of the order nicely in this fourth inning. Now she's got Maddie Banks to deal with. 
Bases empty, two out. Banks is one for one with an RBI single. And the first pitch to her is a breaking ball that she lays off of. And a good take, one that was sitting on the corner and just died off right before it got to the plate. One ball and no strikes to the Miami left fielder. And she takes up high for ball two. Banks, the Iowa native. Looking to get a hit in every game of a weekend series for the first time this season. 2-0 outside. Already has that single, trying to reach base for the second time now. Head 3-0, and taking all the way, that's strike one. Red light on. Kieran Kumar with her hands on her head at third base. Not looks super pleased. Three balls, one strike. Their hands spread out on the bat, the pitch. Taken for strike two. And so Grace Leto has battled all the way back in this count. Three balls, two strikes with two gone in the fourth. Miami's got runs in every inning so far. Grace Leto trying to work a one, two, three. Here it comes. Waited on and punched foul. Desperation swing. Banks realized the breaking ball was coming and just threw her hands at it to fight it off. The 3 2 popped up, playable in fair territory on the left side, coming over from short is Springer, and behind the third base bag makes the catch for out number three. First 1 2 3 inning of the game comes for Western Michigan, or Central Michigan rather, in the field. And we head to inning number five with Miami still in front by three. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Stay tuned. Top of the fifth from Oxford. Just got our first scoreless frame of the game on both sides in the fourth. It stays a 4-1 score. Bree Pratt has been strong, especially in these last three innings after giving up the home run. He's dealt out one walk, just one strikeout, but only two hits past the home run, and both of them were singles. Number three, catcher Samantha Mills. Sammy Mills up to the plate, hit one of the singles off pre Predator last time up. And the first pitch to her is up high for ball one. So 
Central Michigan dugout has been nice and supportive all game long. Making some noise on the right side as the 1-0's dealt in, popped up and out of play behind home. A couple steps at it from Coyne, but that ball far gone from the reaches of the field. Ball and a strike to Mills. Twists her hands on her bat. Pitch falls down and in, two balls and a strike. Ohio and Western Michigan headed to extra innings. Two one pitch. And this one's hit well out to center field, going over on it. Golombeski into the gap, and she makes the catch on the run. One out in the top of the fifth. Number two, first baseman Lucy Cronin. Lucy Cronin, who grounded out to short to end the top of the second inning, coming up to the plate for the second time. Despite the lack of one, two, three innings for Miami in the field, they have gone through this order pretty efficiently. A couple of Four batter innings, double play back in the third. Central Michigan has not gotten more than four batters to the plate in an inning yet. This one popped up, second base side, Parks coming in and making the catch. Two gone. A soft little looper there at the Miami second baseman. And it brings up Maddie Springer at the bottom of the order. Ripped a ball her last time up. That was caught at short. Two gone. Bree Pratt trying to go quick through the fifth. The first pitch falls down low. One ball and no strikes. Springer takes ball two down low. Pratt's one walk was dealt out in the last inning to Kelsey Alexander. It was a four pitch walk, but she got right back to it with a strikeout and got through that inning in just four batters. Again behind here, three and zero. Oh. 60 pitches for Pratt through four and two thirds. Her efficiency has gotten better as this game has gone along. The 3 0. Red light on all the way, strike one. So Pratt trying to work her way back. Springer. Might go swinging again here, the 3-1. She does just that, ripped over to short. Backhand field by Barlow. Throw on to first is not in time. Really nice play out there at short by Barlow to knock that one down, but that throw just had to go the entire length of the infield pretty much. And so it results in an infield single for Maddie Springer, who's aboard for the first time in the game. And it brings up the top of the order with Abby Tolmy at the plate, who's one for two. So no one, two, three inning this time for Miami. Tolmy's single came in her last at bat after grounding out to short her first time. Takes a first pitch strike over the outside half of the plate. Central Michigan, one run off four hits. No errors, two left. Four runs off, five hits, no errors, two left for Miami. Yo one, and it's in there for strike two. Both teams with the same number of batters up to the plate. Miami's done it though in 
two thirds of an inning less. No balls, two strikes to Abby Tolmy. Bree Pratt looking for strikeout number two. Won't get it that time. One ball, two strikes to Abby Tolmy. Does not strike out a whole lot. More walks, way more hits than strikeouts. The one, two, and she pops it up into the screen. One ball and two strikes still to Tolmy. And she swings and misses at the next offering for strike three. Pratt pumped it by her and strands one in the top of the fifth. Miami still rolling as we head to the home half. 4-1 Red Hawks here on Love and Honor Live. In the bottom of the fifth, it is right fielder Allie Cummins. Allie Cummins leading off the bottom of the fifth for Miami, 4 1 Red Hawks. Miami has been in pretty decent control of this one since taking the lead in the second inning. Really shut things down in the field. They had their first scoreless frame at the plate in the last inning, bottom of the fourth. Cummins grounds this one up the middle, and that's through for a base hit, so a strong start for the top of the order here in the fifth. As Miami looks to get back to their run scoring ways. Holly Blaska taking the plate for Miami. Scored a run back in the third after walking, officially hitless. Let's get a left-handed swinger. Takes the first pitch and it's up high for ball one. I think it was an umpire mandated change of the ball and so they will get ready for the 1-0. Good part of the order coming up for Miami. But a part of the order Struggled a little bit. Spade in the on-deck circle with two strikeouts in this game. 1-0 to Blaska. And she lines this one right side. That's going to get into the corner. Off the wall, on the fly. Originally getting waved home was Cummins, but she will then stop as Kieran Kumar sends her back to third with nobody out. And a double from Holly Blaska. Gives the Red Hawks a little more life in the bottom of the fifth. So a wave of momentum into this at bat for Carly Spade. The right handed swinging junior will have two in scoring position with nobody out. Looking for her first hit on the day. Central wanted to talk it over. Met the infield in the circle. Oh, 
Corner infielders in. Big hack on the first pitch to Spade and she comes up with nothing but air, strike one. No balls and a strike. Spade awaits, now the offering. And she swings and misses at that for strike two. Lato grabs some rosin. She's got four strikeouts and half of them have come to this Miami batter, Carly Spate. O2 pitch, up high. Good job by Spade to not chase. What's been a frustrating day at the plate for Spade, but not jazzed up enough to try and chase the high cheese. One, two pitch. And she lifts this one sky high, left field, coming in Alexander, and she makes the catch. Both runners bluff as the throw comes in, and it is cut off by Lucy Cronin, left of the mound. Runners can't advance. So Spade doesn't get the runs in, but does at least get a ball in play for the first time. As she flies out to left, that brings in Riley Coyne, who has a single and a towering fly out to her name in this game. Coyne, the graduate student out of Chelsea, Alabama, gonna give the Red Hawks some more insurance in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch swinging and misses for strike one. Coyne's base hit was just floated over the infield on the right side. All the infielders are in for central. So the 0-1 is fouled back. A lot of room to do the same. Softly hit ball to the shallow outfield grass would likely score two runs. Jenna Golombeski, who's already got a home run in the game, is waiting in the on-deck circle. That home run came in her last at bat back in the third. 0-2 to coin. So a similar at bat to what Carly Spade did just moments ago, Riley Coyne facing a one-two count. And she swings and misses for strike three. Grace Lido, she's got a lot of swing and miss stuff. It's been about a strikeout and a half per inning pitcher this season. And she's now got her fifth strikeout through four and two thirds. Red Hawks had second and third, nobody out. Trying to avoid stranding both of those runners at their last hope. Relying on Jenna Golombeski. She takes a first pitch off the plate, checked her swing. And it's a ball and no strikes. Golombeski playing out in center field. It's had a little bit of work to do out there today. The 1 0. That's down low, and Mills crouching down to squeeze it, preventing it from getting to the backstop. Not a lot of room behind home here at Miami Softball Stadium to get a good deflection off the backstop. It's probably not going to score a runner from third. 2 0 to Golombeski. A pie and in on the corner for strike one. Two balls and one strike. This is the first time in a couple of batters where Leto has really pitched around someone, but now the 2-0 is fouled. And Leto's got Golombeski right back into a two-strike count. Mills had to wear that one, so she'll take a second. 
Central trying to turn the tides their way after giving up back-to-back -back hits to begin the inning. Second and third, nobody out. Turns to second and third. Two outs and a 2-2 count. Pitch, a pie ball three. Chloe Parks, who's 0 for 2 on deck for Miami, has had a very weird day at the plate where you could probably say she's been robbed of two hits. Ground ball to first that had no one covering the bag, and she was barely beaten by a diving effort from Cronin to tap her glove on the base and then lined out on a hard hit ball the third or last time up. The 3-2 to Golombeski. She sends this one out to left center field. That ball is off the top of the wall. Both runs coming in. Golombeski pulls into second with a slide. And just what the Red Hawks needed to avoid stranding the runners, a two RBI double from Jenna Golombeski who continues a hot day at the plate. 6-1 Miami. And that brings up Chloe Parks. Second baseman, Chloe Parks. As mentioned, it's been an interesting day at the plate for Parks, who's 0 for 2 line, doesn't really tell the full story. Swings at the first pitch, pops it foul off the handle of the bat. Nothing in one. Central playing pretty straight up in the infield. Crouching the 0-1 pitch, and this one is rolled over on the right side. It's a fair ball, and it's fielded by Cronin. She'll tap on the bag herself for out number three. Red Hawks at the very last life get two more runs as they avoid stranding the runners on the RBI double from Jenna Golombeski. 6-1 Miami headed to the sixth here on Love and Honor Live. Top six from Oxford, Red Hawks tack on two more on the two RBI double from Jenna Golombeski, and it's 6-1 Miami headed to the sixth. Bree Pratt has not needed to see more than four batters in any inning yet. Saw three batters back in the third after giving up a single, got a double play ball. Base runner in every inning for CMU. But nothing to show since the first. Kaylee Valamont up to the plate. Takes a breaking ball in there for strike one. Really nice pitch from Pratt that just ducks in there. Valamont is one for two. Hit a home run back in the first that serves as the only run for Central. And then grounded up the middle into a 6-3 double play to retire the top of the third. Choked up slightly on the bat and swings and misses at the 0-1. A chase job that time as it kicks away behind the plate from Riley Coyne. So with no balls and two strikes, Valamont's going to call time. Have an offensive conference. Their coach, McCall Salmon. Down 0 and 2. Pratt with two strikeouts on the game, one in each of the last two innings. After giving up the solo home run in the first, has worked 
the last four scoreless. She's thrown every inning this weekend. Total of 12 innings yesterday. Complete game in game one and then a complete game and a five inning run rule in game two as the Red Hawks won it eight nothing. Pratt readies the 0-2. Bounces in the dirt. So Valamont takes another second to regather. Now she's back in. Wiggling her way into the box. 1-2 pitch coming up. Takes a check swing. The appeal to first says no swing. Bree Pratt is a fervent disagreeer, but she will now step back and deal in another 2-2. Two -two. So the count is even at two balls, two strikes. Pratt has been laughing since that last pitch came in. Now here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed strike three. I like it. Felt that might be coming from Pratt trying to draw the chase after she didn't get the check swing call she wanted. One away in the top of the sixth. Central's got five outs left to work with and they need at least five runs. Kelsey Alexander is 0 for 1 with a walk. And watches a first pitch down low for ball one. So she's now seen five pitches and has not seen a strike yet in her last two at-bats. Popped out to Adriana Barlow at shorter first time up. And rolls this one on the ground, played by Carly Spade. Foul, left of the line. One ball, one strike. Ohio and Western Michigan right now in the ninth inning. Still tied up at 11. OU threatening his score with two outs in the top of the inning right now. 1-1. One, one. This one hit pretty well out to right field. Backing up is Cummins at the warning track. On the run makes a nice catch. So Cummins had to get onto the gravel to make that play, but just short of the wall she did to rob what would have been an extra base hit from Kelsey Alexander. That brings up Alyssa Holo, who's searching for her first hit, first trip to the base pads. She's 0 for 2 with a ground out and a strikeout. Despite all this success, Bree Pratt still hasn't retired three in, in a row in an inning. First pitch is fouled off. Got the double play back in the third after giving up the single. That's the closest she's been to a 1-2-3. This is the third time through the order for Central. Alyssa Holo serving as their cleanup hitter. Team leader in home runs. Here's the 0-1. Stabbed it outside behind the plate by Coyne, a ball and a strike. One one count. Pratt readying up. Here comes the offering. Swung on and missed. Pulled the string that time. Change piece. Holo was out in front of it. Pitch that looked relatively straight from Pratt. One ball and two strikes. Olo won't chase. Two and two. Central dugout still making some noise. Chips trying to come back 
to avoid the sweep. Came in as a crucial conference series. The 2-2 misses down and in for ball three. This has been a very unideal road trip for the Chippewas who had a chance to potentially move into first place in the MAC when the weekend was over. Could now find themselves as low as third. Three balls and two strikes. Bratz pitch is crushed out to left field. Backing up his banks at the wall. It's gone. <laughs> Alyssa Holo with the solo shot for CMU. Not done yet. Six two in the top of the sixth. At the plate, second baseman Skyler Coberly. Skyler Coberly comes to the plate for the Chippewas. She is 0 for two. And takes the first pitch strike right over the plate. So for Central Michigan, all the offense that appears on the scoreboard has come from two solo home runs. Three singles to go along with it to total their five hits. 0-1 is in there for strike two. No balls, two strikes to Coberly. Four home runs for her on the year, seven doubles. Trying to start a rally for the Chips. Down to their final four outs. The 0-2 pitch, this is down low. Over in Kalamazoo, Western Michigan escaped a bases loaded jam in the top of the ninth to keep the game tied in the ninth. One, two pitch, down low, two balls, two strikes. And once again, that's the first game of a double header they're gonna play in Kalamazoo. Second game, I believe, was scheduled to start at 1 p.m., but that's not gonna happen. We're already over a half hour past that. Two, two, just low. Ever so slight check swing from Coberly, but held up. A tough two strike take, but she works the count full. The 3 2. Off the plate, ball four. So Coberly works the two out walk, and a bit of a rally developing here for Central Michigan. That's just the second walk dealt out by Bree Pratt in this game. Riley Coyne was about halfway out. And Bree Pratt was kind of shaking her off and now Coyne has made her way back out there. Looks like we're gonna see a pinch runner here for Central Michigan and we will. The pinch runner for Central Michigan. So Angela Petrovich, the freshman out of Macomb, Michigan, will come in to run for Skylar Coberly. And the first pitch is hit on the ground, and Miami immediately puts it away. So Central Michigan gets the home run, gets the walk, but they still find themselves down by four. Red Hawks looking to erase that run when they come back to the plate in the bottom of the sixth when we return, you're watching Love and Honor Live.
for the Red Hawks. First to bat in the bottom of the sixth. Bottom of the sixth inning here from Oxford, 6-2. Miami out in front. Kate Kobayashi will lead off for the Red Hawks. Central Michigan with a two-out homer and walk in the sixth inning. Inched closer, but could not rush closer. Still behind by four. Miami looking to get back to it after scoring two runs in the bottom of the fifth. Grace Lido fires the first pitch, and Kobayashi lifts it up right side. Could be playable, and it's just out of reach of Cronin, who was giving chase. Kobayashi is 0 for 2, has flown out to center field twice. Grace Lido has been hit around a bit, but outside of that, she's been pretty solid. It's been extra base hits mostly that have been an issue. Miami's hit a couple of home runs, a couple of doubles. The 0-1 over the plate for strike two. Kobayashi looking to get on base for the first time. Hits in her last four, the 0-2 pitch. And she crushes this one to deep left center field. That ball is gonna get way out of here. Kobayashi extends the hitting streak in what was her likely last chance. Hits her second bomb of the season. And Miami claws the run right back from Central Michigan after they got it in the top of the sixth. Red Hawks lead again by five. So that brings up Adriana Barlow. And the Red Hawks steal the momentum back as the first pitch dealt in as a strike to Barlow who's one for two with a single and a run. Kate Kobayashi, not a huge power hitter for Miami. Brings a lot of good contacts. He's hit a decent amount of doubles. Actually leads the team in that category. Is the 0-1. Hit on the ground a short. Short hop play by Springer. Bobbled it a bit. Low throw to first is picked by Cronin for out number one. The deep fly, not a huge part of Kobayashi's game. That was a no-doubter, though, that she hit the left center. Maddie Banks now in to hit. She's one for two. Banks got a piece of the first pitch, tipped it back for strike one. Her single came back in the second inning, got an RBI out of it. Four different players with RBIs in the lineup for Miami led by Jenna Golombeski, the only player with more than one RBI, and she's got four. 0-1 pitch, breaker up high, watch out. One ball and one strike to Banks. The 1-1 pitch, and this one rolled over to first, stabbed at by Cronin. She's been strong over there on the right side of the infield. Taps on the bag for out number two. Back to the top of the order we go for Miami. Allie Cummins has reached base every time she's been up. Had a base hit up the middle her last time. The front end of two straight Miami batters to reach. Red Hawks had second and third with nobody out in the last inning before back-to-back -back outs made it look like the Red Hawks might be held off the scoreboard completely. As the first pitch is taken for strike one. But then Jenna Golombeski came through with the two-out double to drive in a couple of runs. Cummins takes the 0-1 out to the opposite field gap, and that's going to get all the way to the wall. She pulls around first and is into second standing up. What a day it's been for Allie Cummins, as she's now three for four. 
Her second extra base hit, this time a double. Shown some tremendous power to the opposite field so far today. And now we're gonna see coaching staff out of the dugout for Central Michigan. To prevent this one from getting too ugly. They do just need one out to get out of the inning. But you felt after they got that run in the sixth, got that base runner, they might be able to at least try to get this close and try to make something of this game in the seventh. But Miami is Made their way back with a run of their own and now a runner in scoring position with two out. This is Grace Leto's game, they're staying with her, but just wanted to meet the troops and have a discussion. Holly Blasco will be the batter for Miami. She's one for two, has scored a pair of runs. Both times she's been on base, she's come across a walk and a double for her on the day after she struck out swinging back in the first. Alaska swings through the first offering for strike one. Now the 0-1 after a stoppage, here it comes. Taken low, one ball, one strike. OU and Western headed to the 10th inning now. One-one offering to Blaska. It's up high for ball two. That game started well before ours began. And it started partway through. It began in the second inning, and they are still not done. Two balls and a strike to Blaska. Good hitter's count. With a runner in scoring position and two gone. Blaska pops it up into the screen, and it's two and two. Hits into double digits now for Miami at 10. They've left three on base. It's been... Pretty good in terms of hitting with scorers, runners in scoring position. Now the 2-2 comes home. High and in for ball three. Carly Spade on deck. She's 0 for 3. But felt she got a little bit closer last time up after a couple of strikeouts was able to get on a ball that found a glove out in left field. 3-2 to Blaska, and she lifts this one up, left side of the infield, coming in from short is Springer, shielding her eyes from the sun, she makes the catch for out number three, and so Spade will lead off the seventh for Miami once we get there. Red Hawks get the run right back, still 7-2. Miami out in front, a chance to close out the game when we return, when we come back. Top of the seventh inning, Central down to their final three outs of the weekend, trying to avoid the sweep. Or Miami, who's tried to play their way after a tough start to Mac play into the top seed 
and tournament hosting honors. This weekend has gone about as well as you could draw it up. Comeback win, game one of the doubleheader yesterday, a run rule in game two. Now in firm control here in game three as they look to keep their lead atop the conference. Sammy Mills is the first batter, and she takes the ball low from Bree Pratt, who's looking to pitch her third complete game of the weekend. Brad readying up. Now the 1 0. And it finds his own in there for a strike. Well, had some wrinkle to it as it made its way in on the zone. One one. Pitch. Waved at and missed. Mills is way out in front. Pratt didn't have any strikeouts for the first three innings and has now had one in each of the last three. Ball and two strikes. And the pitch is up high. Two balls, two strikes to Sammy Mills. She's one for two. The single and a fly out. Seven, eight, nine due up in this inning for Central Michigan. Two, two. Low for ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Mills has worked it full. And the pitch. And she gets a piece of it, tipping it back towards Coin. Caught that one on the leg. Coin and Karen Kumar exchanged some words as Miami's head coach came out of the dugout to check on her catcher. The count remains full. The payoff to Mills. Soft grounder, Parks comes around it, has to hustle it over to first, and the stretch is not in time from Blaska. And Kieran Kumar calls time and is over to talk to Brian Haraberta, the first base umpire. Get his ass, coach. And 2K frustrated with what transpired at first base. Parks kind of waited back on that ball a little bit more than she probably should have, but it was a fast throw over to first. So Coach Kumar gets warned. Call's going to stand. And so that brings in Lucy Cronin. Cronin is 0 for 2. Runner on first, nobody out. She rolls this one over foul on the left side, just out of reach for Carly Spate. O one one count to Cronin. Pratt has done extremely well with base runners. O one one pitch. This one hit on the ground over to Barlow. She steps on the bag for one on to first, and it's another 6-3 double play. Second one turned individually by Barlow. It's short. That one a lot tougher then the first one was she had to come a long way to beat that one out. And the chips are down to their final out. Bree Pratt outside of the two home runs. She's given up now four singles, two walks, and a fielder's choice. None of those base runners have reached second base. 
Maddie Springer, the lifeline for Central Michigan. First pitch in there for strike one. Springer singled her last time up. Prior to that, lined out to short. Pratt deals the 0-1, chipped foul. No balls, two strikes. Miami trying to complete the sweep. Here's the 0-2, outside. A few Miami fans wanted it, but that ball was not close to the zone. One, two, popped up. And the catch made in the circle by Spade. And the ball game is over. Miami wins it, seven to two is the final score. The Red Hawks complete the sweep of the Chippewas in a huge weekend for Miami in terms of their hopes to host the MAC tournament this year as the Red Hawks stay atop the conference. And they close out their regular season here at Miami Softball Stadium on a win. Bree Pratt throws a complete game. She's the winning pitcher in this one. And the losing pitcher, Grace Lato, as Miami wins it 7-2. Red Hawks are 32-17 now. Overall, 19-7 in conference play for Central Michigan. They head back home 27-22 overall, 17-9 in the Mid-American Conference. Miami has now won 12 of their last 13 in conference play and will close out their regular season on the road against Kent State. First pitch of that series on Friday. They will play three. It's a 3 p.m. start in Kent for Central Michigan. They're back home against Akron as they look to get their final tune-ups in before the Chippewas will also be playing in the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Maybe back here in Oxford in just a couple of weeks' time. Thanks so much for tuning in this weekend. A great weekend for the women of Miami softball. 7-2, to they close it out here on this Sunday. And that'll wrap it up for us here at Love & Honor Live. So for our producer, Casey McAllister, our entire crew, Making it happen behind the scenes. My name is Luke West Poli saying so long from Oxford. Final score on this Sunday, Miami 7 and Central Michigan 2.